Welcome back again. Uh, should be a pretty easy day today, so a, a good little enjoyable day. I uh, got to learn a little bit about C. Uh, start with my little joke, uh, Cookie Monster. Cookie, 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 that's good enough for me. I'm sure nobody remembers that song, but good stuff. Uh, so the C programming language, first a little history. Uh, it was actually created in like 72. I mean, it's hard to say exactly when a language is created. They kind of evolve a little bit. Um, but the point that I'm trying to make is that it's old. All right, so I mean 72, that's, you know, that's way older than me. Um, so it's been around for a long time. Um, it is actually the ancestor to a lot of more modern languages. So like Java, C++, Objective-C, they were like built right on top of C. Um, again, they were built a long time ago. And, and even the languages that are built today are based on languages that are b based on C, right? So I mean MATLAB, Python, JavaScript, C-sharp. Uh, these are all kind of, C is kind of the, the root of everything. Now you may be surprised that we're using such an old language. The reason is simple. Uh, C is a very low level language. Um, so when you make a variable, like you define exactly how many bits it is. Um, and it gives you really low level access uh, to the hardware, which is really important on a microcontroller because you want to be so efficient with your space. Uh, because you have like, you know, a few kilobytes um, of memory and you want to be really efficient with it. And C helps you do that. The other reason is a practical reason. It's very, very easy for people to make compilers for C. Um, so it's a very practical, uh, easy to use language, and it's quite effective for microcontrollers. Eventually microcontrollers will go to C++, but C will always be very, very popular in microcontroller land. Uh, so it's really not much fun to talk about uh, without doing something with it. Uh, so go ahead and uh, fire up MPLAB, uh, pause the video if you have to, and I'll just kind of uh, work it here and you pause as needed. Uh, what I want you to do just for today is uh, to make a new project. Um, you of course want a standalone project because that's what we're always going to use. Uh, go ahead and say that you're going to use the PIC 18F4520, but to be honest for today's project um, you're just going to be doing basic stuff, uh, but you'll go ahead and say that you're going to use that microcontroller. Uh, the simulator will be fine today. Uh, there's no reason to run it on actual hardware. Hardware. In fact, the simulator is nice because you can use printf and it'll just display right to the screen. Um, and then pick the uh, the C18 compiler that you've got. As far as the name goes, uh, I'm just going to call it Intro to C. Um, that's a fine name. You can call yours whatever you want. Uh, intro to C obviously needs a source file, uh, so I'm going to right click and say New. Um, and I'm going to use my template.c. Assuming you've done it once before, template.c will show up right in the list, so it's handy. Um, the first time, remember, you had to go to other and find it, uh, but now I've got it right here. It wants to give it the name new template. Uh, we can give it a better name than that. We'll just call it intro to c. We'll make the .c file the same name as the project. No reason not to. Um, and so now we've got ourselves a, uh, a new project. Uh, that has uh, our template code in it. Uh, so in this first video, we're just going to kind of look at a couple things in the template again just to talk about it. Uh, the first thing we'll mention is uh, comments. Uh, you can see that there are two style of comments if you look closely. Um, ones that, that knock off entire blocks, they begin with a slash star and finish with a star slash. Um, and then there are later, there are single line ones uh, which are just slash slash. And that's also mentioned in the slide, right? So single comment lines and multiple comment lines. The other thing, just to mention it really briefly, not really the focus of today, um, is all these preprocessor directives. Uh, they begin with a pound sign. The main thing I want to say about them is that if something begins with a pound sign, um, it's not like a normal C language. Um, so it will not end in a semicolon. Most things in C end in semicolons. Um, but you can see that these uh, that begin with a pound, none of them end in a semicolon. They are, of course, very, very useful. Um, the include statements give you functions you didn't write uh, so that you can use them here. Uh, these pound pragma config things, they set up the microcontroller. Uh, we won't worry about the details. And then pound defines I use all the time. Um, so I use them to define constants so that they're not in my code. You'll also see a, a pound pragma here for code. It just says, hey, here comes some normal code, uh, so no big deal. If there were interrupts, you'd see some more things down there. All right, all I'm going to say about those, um, I just want to mention they don't have a semicolon. That's all I really wanted you to learn today. 
The uh, next thing in this uh, template file is the main function. Uh, a feature of C is that it always looks for a function called main. Uh, those four letters, you know, M A uh, I N, are sacred, right? So the, in your project, you can have only one function uh, with the name main. When you hit go, um, it looks for that function named main, right? So it's a very sacred function name. And for our template, we've got a lot of stuff in here. Uh, but to be honest, this is for the microcontroller. Um, so I'm just going to blow away some of it. Um, so I'm going to blow away that portion. Um, and I'll go ahead and keep the uh, area that happens once and the, the while one loop. Um, but I don't really need the rest of it today. So I'm going to blow, blow away the things I don't need. Um, and then the, the last thing that I wanted to say, like in this first little video, is about functions. Or sorry, about variables. Uh, variables in C you have to declare. So you have to say quite specifically what type of variable are you. And what happens in the declaration is the computer goes and it reserves memory space for you. So here you say uh, we've got a char, which we'll talk about more, that's 8 bits. So it reserves 8 bits in the data memory um, and it gives you this, this name x which lets you refer to that location. Um, each variable type reserves a certain space in memory um, so that it, it's got that block and when you pull it out it knows how to interpret those ones and zeros. Declaring um, can be just you declare it and nothing else. Um, you can also declare and define together or it's define is sometimes called initialize, same, same. Um, and if you do that, it um, basically sets a value to it at the same time that you reserve the spot in memory. Um, so here you can see that it's quite simple to do. And this is stuff you, you would have done by default, but now you know the words, right? Declaring a space in memory, uh, defining it with a value, or initializing, whichever you want to say. There are two different places uh, that you are going to typically declare variables at. Um, some you're going to make global variables, so we'll just kind of go look in here. So there's a section in here for uh, global variables. Um, and so a global variable is also sometimes called a module level variable. Um, technically these are module level variables because they're only visible to this file. But since most of the time you're going to work with only one file anyway, um, a global and module level mean the same thing, right? So I'm just going to call them uh, global variables up there. Um, they are declared outside of any function. If they are declared outside of any function, then everybody can see them. They have, they have global scope, so you can use them inside any function. The other um, type you can do is a local variable. Um, if I define it inside the main function, um, then its scope is only within this main function. And so that's the only place that you can, you can use it. Um, and we've got some details um, about that on the next slide. Um, most of the things on here are things you would assume. Uh, the only one that gets people, the only detail that like, gets people is uh, this one right here. Um, if you declare a local variable, it has to be the first thing in the function. Um, and you'd be surprised at how often that, that gets people. Right, so if we said, um, you know, there's a local variable, and then we print out, um, I don't know, hello, put my backslash in on there to get the line in, and then we say later, it's like, oh, you know what, I also want the variable seven, and then I want to print it out, right? Um, it turns out that this is actually bad. Some compilers um, are smart enough to, to figure it out that it's okay. Um, you know, that you've declared kind of mid-function. Um, but technically the C standard is uh, the compilers don't have to support it. Um, so according to the official like guidelines, this should throw a syntax error. So it should fail to build. Um, and indeed it did. It said syntax error. So I clicked on it um, and it says that there's a syntax error here. What's the syntax error? Uh, the syntax error is simply that if you declare a local variable, um, it has to be all your declarations um, have to be the first thing in the function. And the reason for that is just to make it easier for the guys to write the compiler that if you put them all at the top, um, it'll start at the top, it'll look for declarations. As soon as it sees something that's not a declaration, it'll stop looking, right? Um, so it's kind of a practicality thing, uh, but it makes uh, life easier for the developers. 
All right, so that's global uh, variables. Uh, and of course, I could use the global variable uh, in here uh, because it's visible everywhere. Um, and that would be fine. I could also use that same global variable. Um, I've got you know another sample function down here. Um, I, I could use it down here just as well. Global variables, you don't have to pass them around. Uh, they're very easy to work with. Um, if you're really technical, local variables are better program practice, but in this class, we don't care. Um, I use global variables all the time, um, and I use I do that because, um, to be honest, the debugger is sometimes better um, with working with global variables. All right, so that's all for this time. Just wanted to kind of give you a quick little intro. Uh, next time, we'll start talking about uh, control structures. All right, see you then.